on the topic of like heated arguments, like, I mean, everyone experiences arguments or frustrating moments. What is your advice for resolving these types of arguments? Like, yeah, just give us your, your, your steps. (laughs) It's interesting because sometimes arguments can get so heated that there is no resolution to be found at that point in time. <laughs> right. And this goes back to a little bit of that acceptance, right? So when an argument starts to get really far down the line, um, you're not so much trying to find resolution. At that point, you could be in a place where you're trying to do damage control. Mm-hmm. And, and so what I mean by that is you're trying to do work so that the things that are coming out of each of your mouths and, you know, the the actions that each of you might be taking and, you know, are being minimized, right, from a negative space. Uh, Because even though, you know, again, not to make relationships sound like these super fragile things, like they can withstand negativity. They can withstand, a a good, healthy relationship will withstand some fights, some even ugly fights, right? But when you have heated arguments, sometimes you're actually switching goals from finding resolution for this particular point in time to ensuring that this doesn't make things even worse, right? Right. And so a big tip that I usually post about, and it really tends to do quite well, is taking breaks, right? So um, taking breaks in the middle of discussions. This is so important and it has to be done constructively. But what you're doing is, you know, you have two people in a discussion and they're both very escalated, right? And they're both, um, they might be kind of outside of their operating window um, and they might be either, you know, hyper aroused or hypo aroused and they could be really either um, very tense and very angry or they could be shutting down. And so they're not actually in a mental space where they can have constructive discussion, they can receive feedback, they can change, you know, what they're thinking and be open to somebody. Um, and so when you reach that state, and those are usually very heated discussions, that's when you know that, hey, it's time for a break. Mm-hmm. And yeah. either one of you should initiate it when you see it in yourself. Yeah, I see. When you do take a break, it's not about storming out. That does not make it better. Um, especially if you have an anxious partner in the dynamic, because if you do storm out, that anxious partner is not going to relax. They're going to be fuming because now they're like, oh, they walked out on me. They're mm-hmm. never going to come back. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm worried about their safety. I don't know where they went, whatever it is. So there is a proper way to do that. Right. Um, but yes. So, you know, a big tip when you do have very heated, heated discussions and arguments is, you know, focus on damage control. Sometimes maybe you'll resolve it another day at another point in time and take the breaks as you need them to come down. And usually you want at least 20 minutes. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, the next question I have is how do you know when you've come to a healthy compromise versus overstepping boundaries or settling? Like, do you have tips for, for making compromises? So a healthy compromise. So here's what's interesting. I talk about this a lot and this concept of reciprocity in a relationship. Reciprocity is not a tit for tat, right? It's not like you did the dishes yesterday, so I'm going to do the dishes today. It doesn't have to be an exact equal exchange, right? Reciprocity is about sticking to each person's strengths, right? And, 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 or whatever the weaknesses are. So you want to show up for your partner, um, in a way that they really appreciate it, right? You want to show up for your partner in a way that's most important to them, especially if it doesn't cost you very much, but you know that it matters to them Mm -hmm. and vice versa, Mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to compromise, it's not about like checking off the list of it being exactly equal of, you know, I met your criteria for that you wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. It's more of what are your priorities and how can I help you and adjust to your big items and your big priorities? And then what are mine and Mm -hmm. how can we focus on that, right? And then that requires, again, it goes back to for me in session with clients, it requires a little bit of digging. Right. Discover what you need to know your own priorities and your own like most important needs. Yeah. And mm-hmm. sometimes people will say, well, okay, well, the fight is very, you know, it's it's one particular subject and it really gets us. Okay. But why has this become such a sore point? Mm-hmm. Meaning like, what is driving your stance in the subject, right? What, you know, what values is this touching on? What pain points is this touching on for each of you? And how can we navigate around those things for each of you? And usually they're not identical. So there is room there to focus on one partner, what one partner needs and then the other partner needs. Okay. So moving on to another question. This is like, we've been talking about issues and and things like that, but the next question is about the positives, right? How do you know if you're in a good relationship and it's worth working on? Like, what are the traits of a resilient relationship? 
it's um, friendship. Friendship is a big one. Um, so traits of a good relationship are is a relationship that you really feel that um, there's rapport between the two of you. You know each other. Again, going back to what we talked about in the beginning, you joke with each other. Those are really good signs of a healthy relationship. Being committed enough that when things go wrong, you're willing to make change. You're willing to reach out for help, right? Um, it's really hard to help or like, you know, to, to adjust a relationship because things will go wrong, even for great partners, right? Life introduces a lot of curveballs and a lot of unknowns and a lot of challenges. So even if you're a good partnership, like things can start to go south. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it's hard to address that when you are not open to receiving, you know, help or feedback. And so being willing to speak to somebody um, being willing to actually, you know, pick up a book or something, go through some exercises together, try to change your ways a little bit. And, you know, that shows, that shows a lot of commitment and there's no, there's it, honestly, it's never too early to do something like that. Um, you can do that at any point because even if you don't have conflict, you will already know signs to look for. Uh, you already know, you know, how to address certain things and you'll be armed with a lot of good tools. So yeah, I would say friendship, knowing your partner, knowing them well, and that really being open to asking for help when things get a little bit tough and knowing that, you know, it can change. It's not the end of it. It's just your, it's your mindset around it. So, so do you have any actionables for like building stronger relationships? Like what are some, I guess, takeaways that listeners can, can practice with their, (laughs) with their partners after this podcast? Notice when your partner reaches out to you about something, right? When your partner shares interest with you, take interest in their interest Mm. because that's a, hey, please, you know, like I want you to know me, right? I want you to know what I care about. You know, create an environment, remind yourself that, hey, um, my partner is talking about this thing that they're passionate about. And even though I normally zone them out because I don't care, (laughs) you know, I'm not passionate about that. Right. My husband, oh my God, (laughs) he just... This man, like he... What is he into? What does he go off about? Everything and anything. And then particularly, so the way he thinks and the way I think are so different, right? I'm very like top down. Like I think very conceptually Uh and then I will bring it down to practical if I need to. Whereas then for him, it starts like, you know, it starts with the technicalities of everything, you know, whether it's, you know, the camera or new equipment or I don't know, a a game or anything. Like he's really into like the fidgeting and the details of something and woodworking. Like this man has so many interests (laughs) and he will start explaining to me how things go together, how they work. And like, and you're like, I don't care. Yeah, this, <laughs> I, I not can only do I that. not care, but it, like it's way over my head. Exactly. Like, he's, he's got the wrong audience. <laughs> right, right. But he still wants you to listen. He wants an art audience. Yes, he does. And so, you know, I, and he knows that I'm not interested, but sometimes <laughs> I'll try. Like I'll have that conscious reminder to like, to right. the degree that I can relate to it. And yeah. of course, he'll have his friends to talk to about this stuff. But, you know, he knows that I'm not just going to shut him down or zone out or ignore him. So that's that's a really important practical tip to foster that healthy dynamic. And mm-hmm. I think we also talked about prioritizing the relationship, going, you know, learning new things together, spending time together, you know, creating room to have difficult discussions, making space for difficult discussions, doing check-ins sometimes. There's a lot of resources available for check-ins. I have one up too. Okay. So those are all things that can really help. And check-ins are really great actually, because normally uh, good check-in questions will ask uh, questions that normally wouldn't come up day to day. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an opportunity to weed out certain things that might be there, but you're not fully aware of. Yeah. Can you share what's in your check-in questions? Like what does a check-in entail? Like an ideal check-in? It essentially, it's about what what worked and what didn't work, right? So what's working and what's not working. Mm-hmm. And there's ways to ask that, right? Um, so it's like, you know, hey, what is something that I did in the past, you know, week or three weeks that you thought was really sweet and it showed you that I loved you? What is something that you really appreciated, right? And maybe the partner really appreciated, but you didn't know. Maybe mm-hmm. it was something really simple. Like, right. you know, you went and made him a cup of tea or something or her. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this doesn't come up day to day sometimes. And so when you have these types of questions, there's an opportunity to be like, oh, my partner really appreciates that. And to do, kind of focus more on that. And then same thing with things that aren't working. You know, what's something that you struggled with, right? Um, you know, what's something that you worry about? 
more recently. And it's not always just about the relationship. Sometimes it's also just about where your partner is right now, because people can change, you know, where they are mentally and how things are going for them and how they're responding to the world around them. And not everybody is very open with that and just offers that information unless it's kind of like asked or elicited. 